Well, here we are. The highly anticipated refresh to the iPad mini is finally here. Now, for many of you, you might not think too much about the iPad mini, but there is a small niche amongst us Apple lovers. Like, it's so hard to explain. It's small and compact enough where it's noticeably bigger than your phone, but at the same time has the portability that most other tablets just don't have. The iPad mini is beloved by many, myself included, and I'm glad it finally got some love after several years. Apple has done something unprecedented and has released a barrage of new products through press conferences and I love it. It's Christmas in March, man. We're gonna cover the mini 5, the new iMacs, new AirPods, everything, so subscribe right now so you don't miss a single one. Let's dive into this unboxing though. Well guys, today we're going to review a product that I'm really excited about, honestly. I love the iPad mini line and finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the iPad mini finally got a refresh. Now, nothing has changed externally on the device. Instead, we get some very beefy internal upgrades. So I decided to get the iPad mini with the Wi-Fi, so no cellular, and the 64 gig model. Just because on my iPad minis, I don't really feel like I need that much storage. I have my iPad Pro that has a lot of storage for that. So anyway, on the front, we have a profile of the iPad mini. That's kind of what they've always done with most iPad mini boxes. And I got the silver color, but you can pick it up in space gray and that new bronzy gold color. Um, on the top, matching Apple logo. So it is going to be silver. On the bottom as well, another Apple logo. We have iPad mini on the side and iPad mini on the side. And then all of your serial number and uh, it tells you what model you got right here. So for this unboxing, if you can see, we have a little pull down arrow, so I didn't need the machete, so uh, my mom was kind of happy about that. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing. And there we have it. It's probably the cleanest we're ever going to see it. We have a little pull tab and I really like how that looks in silver. Honestly, we're going to set that off to the side and see what we get inside. So here we do have our little packet that says designed by Apple in California. So here you'll see one of the new features is that we can use the Apple pencil. Now the first generation Apple pencil on the iPad mini. But other than that, I mean, we really don't get a lot of instructions, warranty and regulatory information here and our coveted Apple stickers as well as our charging brick. And this is going to be a 12 watt USB power adapter. And then of course, we're also going to get our USB to lightning cable. But now the star of the show. So we're going to have our iPad mini here and let's go ahead and unwrap the plastic. And I'll more than likely want to put a screen protector ASAP. But here we go, guys. Just a quick tour. We do have our speaker grill down here on the bottom. So it is down firing. Our lightning port there. On the side, we're not going to have anything. On the top, we do retain our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as a microphone here. We have our sleep wake button here. On the right hand side, again, nothing. If you have the LTE model, you'll have a SIM tray right here, but we don't since it's the Wi-Fi. Our volume rockers up and down. On the back, we're gonna have our nice polished Apple logo in silver, iPad branding down here, and as well as our eight megapixel camera with another microphone right by it. So externally from the iPad mini 4 to the iPad mini 5, nothing has changed. It's actually the exact same chassis. The only thing that changed is this placement of a microphone. It used to be over here by the camera before. That really is our only external change, but there you have it. Now having the unboxing out of the way, let's go straight in because we have a lot to cover. I want to cover the biggest differences between this and the last generation and then go into specs and all that later on and then give you my honest opinion on this device. Quick spoiler, I love it. But it does have a few flaws which I'll mention later. First off, the biggest change has to be the internals. Really, this is a total spec upgrade so externally, nothing has changed except for the repositioning of this mic here on the back. Other than that, all previous cases and screen protectors should fit the mini just fine. So same exact bodies and dimensions. As far as the newly upgraded chipset, this is massive. You see, normally what Apple would do is put older generation chips into their iPads to reserve the strongest available chips for their iPhones and Pro iPads. But this time they packed in the super powerful A12 Bionic chip 
with the neural engine. The A12 is the exact same chipset found in the iPhone XS and XS Max. So in terms of performance gains, this is massive. And not only that, the neural engine now helps with artificial intelligence and just makes the mini an overall more reliable and smarter piece of tech. Previously, we had the Apple A8 chip, which in 2019 was starting to become extremely outdated. So I'm glad the Mighty Mini got such a powerful chip. Next up, we got a small but beloved feature. I'm so glad the Mini 5 retained the same beautiful 7.9 inch display, but now it's even better with True Tone. True Tone reflects the color balance to better match the ambience of your surroundings, meaning it'll change the color of the screen either cooler or warmer so as to be easier on the eyes. True Tone may not seem like a big deal, but it's one of those things you don't really notice, therefore you don't really appreciate it. But once you turn off True Tone on your MacBook or your iPhone or your iPad, you really start missing it. Good thing is, if you miss it, just turn it back on. But when a lot of you start missing your ex, you also be turning on your phone and calling them. The new Mini also has support for a wider P3 color gamut, so colors look even more vivid than before. Last but not least, we now also have Apple Pencil support for the first generation pencil. May not sound like much, but for those who are graphic designers or artists, then this is your dream come true. The compact size allows this iPad mini to easily fit in coat pockets, small bags, and just to carry around while palming it. If inspiration hits, just bust the mini out and start sketching to your heart's content. It's also perfect for taking notes during a conference or a meeting without having to bust out a massive 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you know, just looking all dumb. Only thing is, I do kind of wish it were Apple Pencil 2 compatible, because I feel the second gen Apple Pen is vastly superior to the first, but that would mean the mini would have to get a redesign, Otherwise, how else would you charge the second gen Apple Pencil? It's evident Apple didn't want to go this route to prevent production costs and simply just upgrade the internals while keeping the cost low. Those three are the biggest changes to the Mini and are very welcome in my opinion, especially the power boost given to the Mini. As mentioned, Dimension wise, the Mini is unchanged which is a nice thing as the Mini is loved for its size and portability. Aside from True Tone, the screen thankfully remains the same and is laminated unlike the entry level iPad. It rocks a screen resolution of 1536 by 2048 pixels and comes in either 64 or 256 gigabytes with a starting price of 399 and 549 respectively. You can also choose to add cellular connectivity, just add $130 to the price so you can max out an iPad mini, 256 gigabyte with cellular for a very handsome $679 which I personally think is a lot for a device mostly aimed at portability and honestly I think most people will be fine with 64 gigs. Although in 2019 I do disagree with the fact that Apple is still putting 64 gigs of storage on their iOS devices. But at the same time, the iPad mini is likely not your only Apple device and you can always purchase cloud storage for a very reasonable price. We still have Touch ID and not Face ID and cameras do differ slightly. We retain the same rear 8 megapixel camera capable of recording 1080p at 30 frames per second and 720p at 120 frames per second. However, we do now have a beefier 7 megapixel FaceTime camera instead of the measly 1.2 megapixel FaceTime camera found on the 4th gen iPad mini. Lastly, we still have the same speaker system which is usually decent for such a small device. Now moving on to some of my favorite personal uses for the mini. One thing many people don't know is that if you get the cellular model, the mini 5 comes pre-installed with an eSIM. Meaning, if you travel to a different country, you simply just pay whatever local carrier there is and you will have service on your iPad mini. This way, you can continue swiping on Tinder and get them foreign baddies. You already know Apple got your back. We do also get Bluetooth 5.0 instead of Bluetooth 4.0, which is really nice. I mean, when I tell you I love the size of the mini, I love it. Around my house, I seriously use it as like a secondary phone. It's easily palmable for me and I'm always watching YouTube or playing music off of it on my Beats Studio so the fact that I have better connection and longer range is definitely a plus for me. And that leads me to my true thoughts on the Mini. I just love the size. It may be Mini but also very mighty. But I don't know girls, what do you think about small and mighty? If I had to choose an iPad as a spare animal, it'd definitely be the biggest 12.9 inch iPad Pro. You already know though. Oof. Have to keep this channel PG. So moving on. I remember when I first got my iPad 4, I fell in love with it instantly. Now that I'm starting to travel more, I cannot be at an airport without my mini. I love going into the Delta Lounge, grabbing a drink, and using my iPad mini to browse social media, 
play some games, or watch YouTube videos all while having my iPhone to reply to Snapchats and iMessages. It's the best of both worlds and is the perfect marriage between an iPad and a phone. Normally, people complain saying, oh, the mini has no use anymore since bridging the gap between phones and tablets is obsolete since iPhones are just so big now. These kinds of people just want attention and need Jesus in their lives. What people fail to realize is that not everyone has the biggest 10s max which has a 6.5 inch screen some people may have the smaller 5.8 inch 10s or maybe even a smaller phone in which case the gap becomes even bigger between screen sizes but even me with my 6.5 inch 10s max the ipad mini is sufficiently bigger enough where the extra inch and a half makes all the difference and i'm not making any more dirty jokes we need to be serious here the iPad mini definitely is a hybrid product, especially now being given steroids. It's insane the Mini 5 now has the same internals as my 10s Max, but is still bested by the Monster A12X chip inside the Pro tablets. But still, the price tag begs to differ. At $400, Many people just want a tablet to browse casually and aren't too concerned with performance, in which case, the 9.7 inch entry level iPad starting at $329 is a no brainer and you can normally cast these on sale for around $250 with a bigger screen. The 9.7 inch does come with many flaws, especially in the display, but that's another video for another day. But I'm still thrilled Apple revived the Mini and beefed it up tremendously. I'd say, even if you have the Mini 4, I'd say the upgrade is definitely justifiable. You go from an A8 chip to an A12, get True Tone, better Bluetooth, Apple Pencil support, and the same long battery life we have come to love from iPads. I rarely recommend upgrading from the previous gen product unless you have the money to blow, but this is an exception. The Mini 4 was severely outdated, and now that the Mini 5 is out, you already know I'm a happy camper. Well guys, that's been it on my review of the iPad Mini 5. It really is one of my favorite Apple devices just because of the size. The Mini 5 is like your really short 4 foot 6 inch friend who's tiny but brings so many laughs to the table and is a joy to have around. Many would like to see the Mini being discontinued, but I beg to differ. My only complaint is I wish the price would be dropped by a good $100, but let's face it, we're talking about Apple, so let's be realistic. But even $349 is a much more attractive price, and at $349, I'd be able to recommend it to way more people. But put it this way, as my final piece of advice, if you want a tablet simply to consume media and don't care about all the nerdy tech aspects of displays and chipsets, the entry level 329 9.7 inch iPad is for you because it has a bigger display enabling you to Netflix and chill much easier and get right down to business 15 minutes into Narcos. <clears throat> But the Mini is for those people who want something ultra light and portable with very few compromises. It's compact, it's extremely powerful now, and has great battery. Yeah, the cameras aren't the best, but come on, let me guess. You're one of those people that take pictures with their iPads. If you take pictures with your iPad, something wrong with you. The only big drawback is definitely that price point and the fact that the Mini still carries essentially the same exact design as the iPad Mini 1. As some articles have touted about the iPad Mini, it's not so much revolutionary, but evolutionary, and I couldn't have said it better myself. The Mini is not doing anything new. It's still an iPad Mini, but it is beloved because of its size and portability that really gives it a very special niche. I also partially think the Mini was updated for the business sector as well, since the Mini is not only so much a consumer device, but also a device that many, many businesses use. However, it prices itself out of the competition when the average Joe sees a bigger iPad at a lower 329 entry price, what do you think they'll go for? But anyway guys, it's been so fun reviewing all of Apple's new spring 2019 hardware and also their new streaming services. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. You'll be seeing much, much more from me, so stay tuned. Hope everyone has a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching.